So Dibs quickly heard that Tammy was better and came round and they all had dinner together and then that night she stayed over at Tammy's house. Dibs and Tammy got ready for bed and settled down, still talking long after they'd snuffed out the lamp. Tammy was telling Dibs all about her new friend Jesus, but Dibs didn't seem convinced. They're saying bad things about him. Who? They. Is anyone saying good things? Oh yeah, lots of people are saying good things. Well then, said Tammy, happy at having proved her point. He scares me, said Dibs after a moment thinking about it. Why? Do you know? I don't understand him and I don't know what he's going to do next. That's because you don't know him yet. Oh, and people who are unpredictable are more fun. You're unpredictable. Am I? said Dibs. She liked the idea of being unpredictable. She turned over and thought some more. My dad says he's a a vandal and a home wrecker. Who? said Tammy, who had nearly dropped off to sleep. Jesus. Jesus, said Tammy. Why on earth would anyone call him that? You haven't seen our roof, said Dibs. The next day, Tammy went round to Dibs's house to say hello and see what had been going on. Quite a lot, it would appear. However chaotic or messy the home had previously seemed, it had achieved totally new levels of random destruction. A large chunk had gone from the roof in the main room, and I do mean large. This hole was about seven foot long. Tammy stared at it in wonderment. Did Jesus do that? Well, no. It didn't exactly do it himself, said Dibs, but my dad blames him for it anyway. He won't be invited back again, that's for sure. Work was underway on the repairs. Five men Tammy didn't know were busy climbing up and down ladders, carrying materials, hammering. They were working very hard, singing away, joking equally hard and praising God. Dibs's father, Tobias, stood looking up at them, with a gloomy expression, shaking his head from time to time. What on earth happened, said Tammy. Dad wanted to know a bit about this Jesus, said Dibs. My uncle Thomas is really keen. He's one of his followers and we were hearing all sorts from him. So Dad asked Jesus round. Well, that sounds fairly normal. You don't usually invite someone to tea and end up with a courtyard instead of a living room. No, said Dibs, but if you ask Jesus to tea, you get everyone from the entire world turning up as well. All of them. A lot of them. You'd run out of cups. We ran out of flour and all. Mum, Open the big doors so that people could sit out in the street and still hear Jesus. And he was talking to them and telling stories and stuff. And my dad was looking all proud because he'd got your dad and all them other rabbis in his house. Then, as Jesus was going on and on, we began to spot bits of dust falling. Just a very little at first, then straw and even a few tiles. Dad was going mad, but he was trying to stay polite because of his guests. I was nearly wetting myself. It was that funny. The rabbis were being all dignified, but they'd got all this dried mud on their posh robes. You should have seen your dad. It looked like terminal dandruff. Jesus just sat there looking up and waited. Then when it was really huge, it all went dark for a moment. And this mad thing started coming through with these, these two hands clinging tight to the side and these little eyes sort of peering over the edge. The look on my dad's face was hysterical. The mat was lowered right the way down by some men on the roof. It landed bang in front of Jesus. 
and there was this paralysed bloke lying on it. Oh, it would be great to do as a party trick. I wish I'd thought of it. Why didn't they just carry him in? asked Tammy. They couldn't have. There were so many people you couldn't get near. They must have gone round the back and up the steps. They'd carried him for miles. I suppose they weren't going to lug him all the way back without seeing Jesus. So then Jesus healed the man. Nah, it was a real letdown if I'm honest. He just smiled at him and said his sins were forgiven. I suppose that's more important, said Tammy. Jesus knows what he's doing. Maybe, but I get bet the guy's mates were mega narc they'd have to cart him home again. Anyhow, then Jesus turned to your dad and them and asked why they were thinking bad things about him. They didn't look too pleased at that. He said they were thinking he was doing blasphemy because only God can forgive sins. So Jesus asked them, which was easiest? Forgive the man's sins or make him walk? He didn't bother waiting for a reply. He just turned to the man, told him to pick up him his mat and go home. And he did. Well, of course he did, said Tammy proudly. I can just imagine the man now celebrating at home with his family. No, that's him there, said Dibs, pointing to the most energetic, most lively, most leapingest around of all the workmen. Oh, wow, said Tammy, staring at him in amazement as he shinned quickly up a ladder with a load of tiles, then jumped down from a high rung and ran off to get another lot. Of course, that is not what Tammy actually said, because it's very modern, and Tammy was speaking Aramaic anyway. But what she said was an expression of such surprise, pleasure and general flabbergastidity that Oh, wow, is the only adequate way I can translate it. He come back with the mates who carried him, said Dibs. Insisted on giving my dad some gifts for the bother and repairing the roof too. They reckon they're going to make it better than it was before. Dibs's uncle Thomas came out of the house and stood by his brother. They were twins and it was always funny to see them because the likeness carried much further than just their appearance. They had the same opinions, facial expressions, mannerisms, everything. Dibs would often try to confuse the townspeople by sending them to the wrong person. If Thomas and Tobias had been the sort of men who liked a joke, they could have had endless scope for amusement. But joking, along with scuba diving and Scottish country dancing, was a means of spending time and energy that would simply never have crossed their minds. They stood together now, rubbing their chins and looking up dismally as the work progressed apace. Rather like the crowd that gathers when you're trying to change a wheel, all shaking their heads and pointing out that you're doing it wrong but never offering to help you get it right. Not enough straw, you see. Tammy heard Tobias say as she and Dibs slipped away. Got to have straw. Never get your consistency right without straw, agreed Thomas. That's what I told them. It's your consistency, I said. You've got to have your consistency. Thomas shook his head and whistled through his teeth to express his misgivings. <sighs> It'll be the rain soon. Reckon we shall see then. Reckon we shall. If Jesus had chosen Thomas as one of his closest followers, thought Tammy, then he had a pretty good sense of humour. That was for certain.